Today we're going to talk about espresso affogato, that is ice cream with a shot of espresso poured on top, because I have some issues with espresso affogato, but I'm going to fix those issues. Well, one of them anyway, because I kind of have a beef with the name. The espresso isn't drowning, the ice cream is drowning. Why is it not gelato affogato? That's beside the point. The real problem I have with espresso affogato is that it's disappointing. I'm not saying it's not good, I'm not saying you haven't enjoyed them, but Typically, they are less than the sum of their parts. I love ice cream, I love espresso, but together, it's often a little bit, uh. So this led me to a journey into ice cream. I wanted to understand why it wasn't good and how then to make the ultimate espresso affogato. The first thing I needed to do was make a lot of ice cream. So I hit up the lovely people at Sage and asked to borrow an ice cream machine and they very kindly sent me one over. So thank you to them. They're not sponsoring, they just, they just lent me this and sadly I have to give it back. And I decided to answer some flavor questions first. I wanted to really answer two separate questions. Is vanilla good or bad? And then eggs. Because eggs are a tricky thing, right? If you've had brunch and you've had like a nice poached egg and you've cut into it and you're eating the egg and then you drink some coffee, you'll notice your coffee tastes kind of weird. Eggs definitely mess with the taste of coffee, but eggs are really common in ice cream. They do wonders to, to kind of uh, improve its texture as well as its flavor in many cases. So I wanted to assess, were eggs good or bad? So to achieve this, I made three different ice creams. I made uh, a milk ice cream, a fior de latte. I made an egg-free vanilla ice cream, and then I made a frozen custard, something super heavy on the egg yolks. So for the fior de latte, I turned to Stella Parks, AKA Brave Tart, because she's just a go-to for anything sweet online. And this was a pretty simple milk forward recipe. 35 grams of cornstarch, 265 grams of sugar, two and a half grams of salt, 225 grams of heavy or double cream, 565 grams of milk. Now, the idea is pretty simple. You're gonna take a portion of that cream and, and whisk it with the sugar and the cornstarch together to create a sort of thickened hydrated cornstarch. You have to heat the milk pretty high to do that, which means that you would destroy some of the flavor of that milk, which is why you only heat a portion and then you add back in fresh cream, fresh milk before you then churn. The egg-free vanilla ice cream I took from my friends at Chef Steps because they always do a great job with super precise recipes. I love ice cream. 0.4 grams of locust bean gum, 0.4 grams of xanthan gum, 0.1 grams of carrageenan. We took 120 grams of sugar, 50 grams of skim milk powder, 550 grams of milk, 165 grams of heavy cream, and eight grams of vanilla bean pulp, which is a lot. The technique here is, is pretty simple. You combine your dry ingredients together, you whisk it into your liquid ingredients. This you then bag up and cook sous vide at 95 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. After cooking, blend it with some vanilla beans and then you chill it down in an ice bath before you then churn it into ice cream. The frozen custard again came from Chef Steps. It's a super simple recipe. 225 grams of sugar, 650 grams of milk, 200 grams of egg yolks, 150 grams of heavy or double cream, 45 grams of skim milk powder, five grams of salt, 10 grams of vanilla extract. Here, you just mix it all together and then you cook it sous vide at one of two temperatures. I chose to cook it a little bit lower at 65 C for an hour because I was more concerned about taste than I was about texture at this point. Then you chill it down, churn it into ice cream. And so we had three different ice creams. And this is a really good place to be in your life. We then did a taste comparison. We took members of the team at Square Mile and we gave them affogatos and we asked them to say which of those three they preferred the taste of. This wasn't about texture, it wasn't about sweetness, this was about flavor. Which ice cream worked the best with the coffee? Now the results of this were super interesting and it did confirm some suspicions I had held. In last place was the frozen custard. It turns out that eggs do indeed mess a little bit with the taste of the coffee. It's, it's hard to describe, but it definitely mutes or blunts aspects of the espresso's taste in a way that no one really liked. Now when it came to the other two, these were both popular. One was popular for having a lovely clean milk taste, but was a little bland. And as it got a little bit closer to melting, that cornstarch gave it a kind of gummy texture. Now the Chef Steps ice cream was really good, but again, not without some issues. Eight grams of vanilla bean pulp is not only wildly expensive to do, but it's actually just way too much vanilla taste. 
In addition, the fact that all of the dairy had been held at a high temperature gave it that kind of cooked milk taste that I don't really like. No one should really like, especially if you spent time being a barista and are kind of allergic to the smell of overheated milk. What I did like about it was the texture was good, the sweetness was nearly there, it, it, it was close. So it left me feeling that there had to be a kind of hybrid way. I wanted that kind of milk flavor from the Fior de Latte, and I wanted some vanilla but less. You want to feel like you're eating ice cream, and vanilla just triggers that part of your brain that says, I'm eating delicious ice cream. So I kind of created a hybrid version of the recipe. I used the thickening agents from the Chef Steps recipe, but I took the technique from Stella. So I took a portion of the milk and the cream, and I heated it up uh, with the sugar and the gums and gelling agents. You want to take it up to the point where it's just about boiling and hold it there until you see it thicken and you'll see a textural change. And then I would cool that down, uh, whip in the milk powder, that's quite hard work to get it to dissolve, but I didn't want to cook it, and then the fresh milk and cream. And then I added the vanilla. I added a small amount of pulp, about one vanilla bean's worth, it's about a gram, and then about five grams of vanilla bean paste. Now when you churn this all up, you end up with an ice cream that goes so well with espresso. But it didn't mean we were done with testing. So if you want the full ice cream recipe with all the measurements and the step-by-steps, well, I created a page on my website, a website that I built thanks to the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. I love building websites with Squarespace because it's so quick and it's so easy. I can go from idea to something beautiful online in the quickest possible time. They've got a huge range of templates to choose from that are easily customized to how you want it to look. It's really easy to take a template that you like and turn it into something that's truly yours. Their editor makes it very easy to get an idea from your head onto the page so, so quickly. Beyond that, there's no need to worry about upgrading plugins or patching things. It's stress-free, it's worry-free. And if you want a website or a domain, you can use my link in the description down below. It'll give you a discount code for 10% off your purchase with Squarespace. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the ice cream. One of the things we wanted to test was the right ratio between ice cream and espresso. Now this is presuming you're doing a smart thing, which is making sure that your cups are freezing cold. Essential to make this all work. And in testing, about 50 grams of ice cream worked really beautifully with a single shot of espresso. There was one more thing that I really wanted to look at though. When you add your espresso, should that espresso be hot or should it be cooled, chilled, cold? We ran some tests. It turns out that the best result comes from pulling the shot hot onto the ice cream directly. Now, the ice cream and the cup itself chill that espresso very quickly, but there is just enough melting of ice cream that that espresso gets diluted by sweet, creamy, delicious ice cream, and the first bite to the last, until you're scraping out every last drop from the bottom of that cup, it's all delicious. If you really want to mess with your espresso, I would err uh, perhaps on the side of, of a more ristretto shot than more of a lungo shot. Chilling it down will enhance any mild bitterness in the shot, whereas that little bit of sugar will mitigate any slight imbalance in acidity. So you can go just a little bit shorter on your shots if you want to. I mean, I still want a two to one ratio in my espresso. I, I just want the espresso to taste as good as it can. But if you want to play, that's how you can play. So, cheers. Mm. That is very good. That is coffee first, and then this nice little pop of vanilla. It's not like a dominant vanilla note, but it finishes like this really kind of milky, lovely finish, which you need good milk. Like there's no point doing this recipe if you're not using really good milk, but if you're making coffee, you should be using really good milk anyway. So. Shout out to Northium Dairy down in Kent. They do a great job. That coffee is just like a little bit sweet, a little bit creamy. The cold cup definitely helps bring the temperature down without melting too much ice cream. Mm. That's really good. That's really good. Mm. You should try this. You really should try this. This is very good. Should we put this on a proof rock? Leave a comment down below if you think we should do that. We will do that. Maybe it'll be available on the streets of London. I hope you try this. If you do, give me a feedback down below. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. It's not. Oh no. <laughs>